Right, let's get you set up for recording. Welcome back to The London Nurse. I'm Ben, and for those of you that aren't regular to the channel because I'm still quite new, I'm not a student nurse, but I once was uh, back in 2009. Since I've qualified, I have worked predominantly with student nurses through their training. And part of the desire to set this channel up was to help student nurses in clinical practice. So today, this video has been requested by a viewer. So if you have a suggestion of a video that you want to see me do, leave a suggestion in the comments below and I would be more than happy to see what I can do to help. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out. So, like I said, this video has been requested and it was a request around any kind of difficult situations or challenging situations that you might find yourself in, specifically as a first year, but actually a lot of this stuff will go right the way out throughout your three year training, plus when you become newly qualified as well. So the way in which I would like to create this video is I have around about 10 different kind of common situations that you might encounter that could be difficult and I'm going to explore the situation and then provide the tip immediately after it or the hint at which I could maybe support you in overcoming a potential scenario like that one. And I really hope it helps some of you just settle some of those nerves down so you can focus on the great stuff that placements are all about. And that is my first point. Although this video is going to focus on the difficult times, any challenging situations that you may encounter, please be mindful that I'm not sitting here saying that you are going to encounter these situations. I am highlighting some potentially challenging scenarios that you may find yourself in as a student nurse in clinical placement. Let's get on with some of the points that I want to talk about. The most challenging or difficult scenario that you are most likely to encounter is the first time that you do anything as a student nurse. The first times that you do anything will be the most challenging for you, but that will be an experience that you have to go through to learn a couple of different things. How you react in those scenarios, i.e. are you one of those people that has a nervous laughter, you know, where, I don't know, your parents might have told you off as a kid and you just can't stop laughing and they're getting madder and madder at you. Those are the scenarios that you might start encountering in clinical practice as a student nurse. You might find that when you get nervous, you might have a laugh and actually you might not experience that until you're in that moment. Now there is a tool that I am going to make a video on hopefully in the next few weeks. And it's called Jahari Window. And for those of you that are first, second or third year student nurses, you may have already encountered it. And if you haven't, I definitely urge you to go and explore Jahari Window. So going back to my point of the first time you do anything will be the most difficult situation you'll be put into. The tip that I can give you at this point would be to basically just watch everything for the first time and absorb the steps in which you need to learn for that particular skill. You don't go into doing a nursing skill on your own unless it's been very clearly explained to you or you've already had experience in delivering it. Don't do it alone, don't do it blindly, you will make a mistake and then you are going to be the one that feels the worst. Just avoid anything like that, ask to watch something for the first time and then get straight onto that opportunity as soon as it comes your way. So number two for me is more around a potential issue as a student that you might encounter in clinical practice. And that is when you have a deadline of an assignment to complete whilst you are on a placement. This is gonna happen quite often throughout the next three years or two years if you're postgrad while you are in clinical practice. So, got a couple of tips for this one. It is stressful. Everybody knows the nurse that you're working with will have equally been through a similar situation. We've all been there and we can therefore all support you in very different ways. So my first tip is to use the team that is around you. Use the people that have gone through those experiences before, that could be students, it could be the nurses, could be the educator that might have some time, but also your university teams as well are there to support you trying to get assignments done when you're in clinical practice. The other part to my suggestion would be to be honest with the people that you're working with that you're in that situation and this is not to look for sympathy, pity or an early finish to your day but it is to maybe look at the, the day of what is planned. You can block out some time to go and work on your assignment. So 
use the environment that you're in, use the people that are there, and your assignments will become more meaningful to you. The content of it might even become more vividly apparent to the reader that is marking your assignment. And it can also help to just fill up some of that placement time when things aren't necessarily so busy. Number three would have to be doing the wrong thing. Now, in my previous video, I talked about kind of overcoming challenges, overcoming mistakes when you're in the clinical environment. So definitely go and watch that video if you haven't already. But often things go wrong when you are actively doing something with a patient. And there are many reasons why things do go wrong when we are interacting with our patients as student nurses. But often that's because we're scared. We are nervous. We may not have done that skill before and it can be really daunting. So the best piece of advice that I can give you to prevent wherever possible mistakes from happening is to come up with a safe word or phrase with the person that you're working with. Now I can still remember my phrase that I had when I was working in the orthopedic ward as a second as a second year. And the mentor that I had at that point came up with this fantastic idea because it was when we were doing quite a complicated um, spinal dressing. So my phrase with my mentor was, take a second. There are many different ways in which you need to phrase a safe phrase because you don't want it to sound alarming to the patient. So you don't want something like, oh, can you see that? So my phrase had a dual use. So I allowed the person that I was working with at the time to use just take a second if they had noticed that I was making a mistake. The other way that I could use it is I'm just going to take a second. I remember using it when I was about to give an IM injection and I'd got to the patient and I just started to freeze and my mind was going blank and I couldn't remember what I was going to do. So as the patient was rolling up his pajama bottoms to get his leg out, I turned to my mentor and looked her in the eyes and said, I'm just going to take a second with you now to make sure I know what I'm doing. So she knew then to support me in that moment, to say, okay, so it's an intramuscular injection, blah, 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 blah. And that really helped to just settle my nerves to then focus on the task at hand. Number four has probably got more to do with me as a person than maybe any typical student, but I know I struggled with this and I know that I've worked with students that have struggled with this as well. And it's when the day changes and you're not prepared. Every nurse will often have days where you plan out what you think is gonna happen and then something comes through as a curveball and just wipes that plan off the day. So it's something to be mindful of that it can happen. And again, if you're aware that that can happen, my advice to you is to think about how you respond to change and how you respond to unpredictable situations to come up with your own potential solutions to overcome that when it is a problem in practice. Point number five is when um, one of your patients or a family member refuses daily nursing cares. Now I'm not talking about refusing emergency treatment here, just to make that clear. What do you do when a patient refuses medications or some kind of nursing duty that you were planning to give? It's quite a big thing to talk about, but actually in the crux of it, you've got to understand why they are refusing that care. There are very complicated situations at points in which people will refuse care. It might be that they've had some previous experience of that treatment, that medication. You've got to explore what is going through that patient's mind at that point to then be able to reassure them, educate them, or just give them some time to come around to the idea and then you'll be able to deliver it later on. Now, you must never forget that patients and families have routines that it's important that they kind of keep up. So it's always really important to kind of plan in your delivery method for the day at the beginning of your shift to overcome any of those barriers. What that will do is then pinpoint specific areas at which they may further refuse for you to do. And it's then that you can understand, well, actually they knew this was gonna happen. So do they have the right understanding or are they scared about what I'm about to do? Now, point number six is possibly my favorite one because I often have to not only only support the students in practice with this, but also try to talk to the staff members to get them to understand how difficult it is when this situation is put to a student nurse. So 
I'm working with you today and I ask you to run to pharmacy to get those medications for the patient to go home. You are about to kind of plod off the ward and somebody stops you and says, oh, would you mind just um, going in to help that healthcare assistant do a bath? And you're like, uh, ooh, uh, uh, um, I was, I've, uh, you could have two tasks given to you at one point. What do you do? How do you politely say no? Really, really simple and quite an effective way is to just explain what you were going to do. It might sound really obvious, but in the moment, it's quite common to just freeze and be like, well, you're asking me to do something, so I'm gonna do it. And to take two lesser kind of scenarios as an example, it might be that I ask you to go and do a set of obs on a patient and somebody else asks you to go to the pharmacy to pick up some medications. You either take the medications as more important, so you decide to go and do that first, come back and then go and do the observations and you think you've managed that successfully. But in the meantime, while you're down in pharmacy, I go in to check on you doing the observations of the patient and you're not there. And I'm like, well, you're not where I asked you to be and I can't see you anywhere else. So the next time I see you, I'm gonna question where you were. You're then gonna feel bad because you're gonna say, oh, I, I had to go to pharmacy because that person asked me to. And then I go to that person and say, well, I asked them to do this. You then have that situation created and it's really avoidable. The person that you're working with is a student nurse. You are always allocated to somebody. Remember that when you're allocated to that person, you're working underneath that person's registration. So when that person asks you to do something, I'm not saying do it, what I'm saying is if you've been asked to do another task, you need to make that apparent to the person that's asking you to do the additional task. Just gain that clarity of, is it possible I just need to go down to pharmacy to get these medications for that patient to go home, and then I can go and do that assessment on that patient, unless that's urgent. They'll go, oh, it's fine, I'll go find somebody else. It's not a problem. Simple. The learning from that will be that you will learn how other people prioritise tasks and their thought processes behind those things too. It's just a winning scenario, really, but it can really cause some anxieties for the student. So be mindful that you might be asked to do two different things at the same time. You're not superhuman so don't think you can do all of it together. My seventh point is a serious, serious one, but I don't want to scare you either, so I'm just going to kind of gloss over it. It's your first time in an emergency situation. Remember that patients are in hospital for a reason. They are unwell, and they are unwell enough to warrant being in a hospital. So expect that you will have an emergency situation that you might have to do something in. Six times out of ten, I think, I haven't done any research on this, but I kind of think from my own experience, six times out of ten, it's a false alarm. It's either been pulled when Auntie Jessie's taken a coat off because she used it as a coat hook. It might have been knocked by somebody kind of just moving around that cubicle, or that bed space. Or it could be that somebody has pulled the bell thinking that the situation looks more serious than potentially it is and just needs some support there. By the time everyone gets there, the person goes, oh my God, it's fine. Thanks, false alarm. But I don't want to talk about that too much because I don't want to scare you. You know, it's going to happen at some point. It will, inevitably. But just take it as it comes keep an open mind and be apparent in the moment. Absorb everything that's going on, then you'll get a debrief from the nursing staff and it'll help you understand what actually happened. The next point does kind of feed on from that one and it's kind of around being asked to go and get something from the storeroom or somewhere on the ward and you've no idea what that bit of equipment is, let alone what it looks like. Somebody asks you to go and get the bear hugger. Is that a joke? What's the hat? What's a bear hugger? You just don't know all of the equipment that you might need for different patients. So the best piece of advice I can give you for that is go, yep, that's fine. I need to go and get the bear hugger. Go off, go and ask the next person that you bump into and say, what is a bear hugger and where do I get it? Simple as that. You can then bring the bear hugger back. You've learned what it is. You know where it's kept and you don't look like an idiot to the nurse that you're working with. Not that you will be looking like an idiot, but you know what I mean. My last two points are quite big ones and unfortunately they are quite serious. Point number nine is looking after patients that have been given bad news. Whatever it is that, that patient has been told that's come as a shock to them, you need to give the patient space, but you need to be obvious that that's what you're doing because you can also be an ear to that patient too. So often we know that talking about problems helps. So if you are going to give that patient some space to absorb and to digest that information, 
information, tell them that. Because what will happen is the patients in their cubicle, they get their bad news and then everybody just leaves the room. If you don't make it apparent that you're giving that patient space or time, they might feel isolated and they could also feel neglected. So ask them if that's what they need at that point. So instead of saying, I'm going to give you some space and time, say, do you need some space and time and I can leave you to have that? They're then in control. They can say yes or actually I've got some questions, can you stay? That's just one of the best scenarios that can come of those situations. Part of our job is to be there to listen and it's really helpful sometimes to just be an ear. And as a student, you can definitely do that. You will not be giving any advice. You will not be giving any answers to any questions they have. You'll be sat there listening. And as a student, that will be a huge learning curve for you to see how a patient goes through the steps of grief. They might not be grieving for really bad news, but everybody that experiences some kind of loss, loss of health, loss of options, anything like that, they go through those stages of grief. So that is a really good learning experience for you to be in and to just support that family as best as you can. And my last point comes with a bit of a pre-blurb. Remember that our jobs as nurses, we are not here to judge people. So you could be looking after the first patient that is an offender of some sort. It's really important that you treat that patient with exactly the same respect and dignity that you do any other patient on that ward. Do not change how you deliver the nursing care based on your own opinions. It's easy to do because we're human, but again, this could be where Jahari Window comes in to help you as to understanding how you react in those sorts of situations. What sort of other, other similar scenarios have you been in where you've explored or experienced reactions that actually you didn't know that you were potentially capable of? It's really important to make sure that the person, despite what they've done, still gets the care that they need. A really tough situation and one that will probably stay with you for the rest of your career if you're in that scenario. So I'm sorry to have ended on that kind of big boom, doom and gloom point, but I'm really hopeful that some of these points have helped you out. And if it has, share the video with your colleagues, your friends, subscribe if you haven't, give the video a big thumbs up if you liked it. And until next time, enjoy your placements, learn as much as you can, and don't let those bad situations put you off. So if you have a suggestion of a view, that's quite hard to say. Ah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that I'm not sitting here saying that you are going to come into these situ- going to come into... Contact? Going... <laughs> <sighs>